All right, welcome back to another episode of us breaking down Decompo- this. Decomposing. De- decomposing the compositions um, of Lost Symphony. Uh, today we're going to look at a track that uh, I barely remember what it sounded like. I have not listened to this one in a while, so it's kind of exciting. This is uh, Negation Delirium. Do you know what that means? Please, please enlighten me. It's, I believe it's, you, you believe that part of your body is missing. Like you wake up with your, I'm curious. Isn't that Cotard? Is that, no, no yeah, it's Negation One Delirium. One of them, you think a, you're dead, right? You're dead. Negation Delirium, I think, is when you think you're dead. I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> Where's my phone? We'll fast forward Wait, to this the phone uh, Googling process here. Do you have a Google here? Do I have the Google? Yeah, Negation Delirium, I'm pretty sure is when you think you're a zombie. See, I, I conflate my own song titles because they're so metal that like I have to look them up. I'm like, that means something cool, but then I'm like, what did it mean? Negation, negation delusion. Same thing, I suppose. Delusions of negation, of self, prevent the patient from making sense of external reality. It's, uh, it's about having a fucked up head and believing yeah, some Yeah, it's metal, man. Yeah. Just remember, it's awfully metal. It's yes. a metal thing. <laughs> um, so we actually have an interlude here uh, so a- after all the songs are kind of put together for the for the record, we put them in order. We'll sit down and and write pieces that go in between each track so they can flow. Well, hopefully, we got we we're presumptuous. We think that like we're so full of ourselves <laughs> that you'll actually sit down with the whole record, you know, with like with vinyl and with your headphones on and be like, oh. And there's like no stopping in between the songs except when we want there to be. But, you know, the old-fashioned concept of, like, the, the whole record has a flow. Or if you're, let's say, tripping on acid, then it's like a whole trip. Exactly. So we'll start with the interlude because it's in the session. We'll see how it sounds. So a lot of times we'd make these to modulate from key to other key. Yeah, that was a fun one. I forgot about that one. That was, that was cool. There's some like bullshit us talking in reverse or something with uh, some church bells I, for I some reason. I want to say it's, it's Alfred Lord Tennyson, All Things Must Die, the poem. We, I, I quote Alfred Lord Tennyson and I'm like, you know. You know, it's funny. We, uh, I, I, if, if I remember correctly, uh, we used a bunch of <laughs> audio that we thought was uh, public uh, use, uh, like the you know, copyrighted expired. Uh, and we did. We went through this entire process for the whole record. We put it all throughout, and then uh, our lawyers said no. <laughs> they they were like, you can't use any of that, and you have to take it all out. And I remember being very bummed about that. But we had a like, bunch of speeches from old uh, movies or something uh, over these things, and then I think that's why we had to switch over to like having the, the poem you picked out to, to do that. Or this could be the Emily Dickinson one, which, what, what, what record is this on? Is this, this is chapter this, two. Yeah, so this is Emily Dickinson. Record one is Alfred Lord Tennyson. So if you hear any kind of talking in the back, it's All Things Must Die. Uh, Emily Dickinson, it's... No, that I was thought, chapter two, All Things Must Die, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> there's, there's a part in the album where it says literally that line and it kind of echoes. I'm pretty sure that that was... Uh, that was chapter two. This is what happens when you write all this crazy music with like a thousand tracks and it's like five years later, you're like, what did I do again? What when, is this song called? When we get to the tracks that have that, we'll find it and we'll, uh, we'll clarify. So make sure you watch every single video we post. Yeah, so you, you have to watch it. All right, getting into the song now.
also kicking it off after the very cinematic movie score sounding intro. <laughs> we go right into Kelly there, who, as always, nails it. Yeah, and the thing that's really cool uh, about that, so it started off, I think Brian had come up with an arpeggio, and it was really cool to hear Siobhan do it because Brian would write with terrible patches in MIDI. So it had like a weird attack to it. So hearing it with real strings was like such like, oh, this sounds so much better. And and, and the other thing that's cool about is this this Kelly solo, this is when we were only, we were tracking with real guitar amps. I mean, I, I pretty much exclusively use the Kemper now because it's just so much easier. But this was from a different time when we actually put like three or four different microphones on, on different... Uh, cabinets and we tried making things sound good and I remember it was such a, a treat because Kelly would send our, his parts as a DI track and then you would hear Kelly playing in my next room even though he's in Canada and we're in Boston um, so these tracks were actually tracked through my studio but Kelly playing in Canada yeah so let me see if uh, we'll get to the guitars there but I want to break down those uh, orchestrations they're pretty badass though. yes they are it's like Batman sounding crap Brian believes that the trombone, tuba, and French horn are the most metal instruments, and I agree. It's again. very, it's very Batman. Yeah, it was. That's exactly what we were saying. It's like we want like to uh, to give you like like your yeah. I'm, I'm Batman. I think Brian and I were literally sitting in the studio going like I'm Batman. Um, and fortunately, Michael Keaton is now Batman again. So I'm happy he? about that. Yeah, oh, that's great. Good for him. Good for him. Full circle. Beetlejuice. So yeah, Kelly comes in, murders it, and then uh, that was kind of the first little section then we get into the theme here it looks like after this oh. real quick we talked about this before but whenever there was like silence it drove me nuts so Tyco drums always make things yeah. better there's anytime there's like Paul stops playing it's like oh what can we fit in there that's like overly dramatic and way too much but that was a huge influence <laughs> from us in the in the first place was doing like movie soundtracks so as much as we wanted to keep it almost a pop format with the way the songs were formatted there's a lot of elements of stuff that you would hear again like uh, you know in broken arrow with hans zimmer yeah you know this entire project is just a way to uh convince movie directors to hire us to score their films which ironically Please. marco our our new cellist who's not on this yeah. song is touring with hans zimmer so yeah. go figure right yeah, so one one degree closer. Maybe maybe Hans will listen to us. Hans, call me, man. <laughs> Joey can step to you out. I think it's the first time we've uh, heard Joey on this, but uh, he is incredible. He, in, in terms of like getting tracks from him and just being blown away every time without fail, it, he's got the best, like uh, the tastiest kind of like ripping solos that fit everywhere. The thing that's cool about this is this is actually, and I think there's video from this. Um, this is the first time that Joey was in the studio and we were sitting with Ollie and Joey on this on this tune and Joey was so nervous. He's like, this is maybe six, seven years ago and he's he's sitting with his back to Ollie and he's like just ripping like like Ingve. Like it reminded me of like that Ingve, like crazy vibrato, super fast and clean. And he was just like, oh, hey guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not really nailing it. And, and you, there's a video of like, he hits this exact take and, um, 
you know, you could see Matt and all are just like, yeah, dude, holy crap. Because, like, we're all sitting there like, this is amazing. And the funny part is, is that, you know, Joey kept going, oh, I, I hope to be as good as you guys one day. And Ollie, I remember saying, like, dude, I'm not even as good as you. And I remember being, like, accurate. <laughs> I love Ollie, but holy crap, Joey has a right hand. <laughs>